if we knew that there was a virus with a 99.9% survival rate in our schools, what did we do? We pulled our kids out of school. Well, I'm here to tell you that there is a virus with a 99.9% spiritual mortality rate in our schools. It takes no prisoners. Very few children are surviving the spiritual Mm -hmm. attack that's happening against them. The public school system, the government schools, and that's really what they are, they are instruments of the state, Mm -hmm. and the state is not for God. There are only two kingdoms in this world. There's the kingdom of of light and the kingdom of darkness. Jesus said, you're either for me or you are against me. Are the government schools for him? Oh, no. Then they are against him. Hey, friends, thank you for joining me on Standing Firm. I'm Tony Stockton, and you are in for a treat today. Uh, I have a very special guest in the studio with me, and uh, I know you're going to be blessed by it. She is famous for her famous hashtag, get off the bench and get onto the battlefield. If you missed our last episode, don't worry, it's okay, because she's back again today. Welcome her back right here along with me, Heidi St. John. Hey, my friend. Thank this is you great. For, thank you for being here all the way from Washington. Yeah. Yes, it's not Washington like you're right around State. the corner. No, it was a bit of it was a bit of a flight too. Yes, how yeah. long is that? It's a, it's a long one. I mean, I didn't get one. in until 11, 11 o'clock last night. And I left at one. Oh so my goodness, it's a long day. Well, you look beautiful. Well, thank you. She's more beautiful in person. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I wanted to have you on the show uh, for this episode because for those of you who don't know, I am a homeschool educator, homeschool mama. We've always homeschooled. We have four. Heidi can speak to that. She's all. You've always homeschooled, right? I pulled our oldest daughter out of public school in second grade. So, wow. Yeah. Well, that's what I want to talk about today because. Heidi, I get this all the time. Yeah. Um, as soon as I uh, got off the bench in 2019, she's why I got off the bench, <laughs> by the way. Um, I got really uncomfortable because <laughs> I had to get uh, in the culture and get onto the battlefield because yeah. I saw what was happening to our children in this generation. And um, we're going to tackle some subjects today that are maybe a little uncomfortable for some of you because I, I, I get the messages and I know she does too. Mm-hmm. But should Christians pay closer attention to your children being in government public school? And should you pull them out now? Is that our duty as biblical parents? And that's what I wanna talk about today. And and off camera, you said something, I wrote this down, is the enemy is coming after our children. Where did I write this down here? Here we go, let me quote you. He is not gonna give up without a fight. Mm -hmm. He's coming after this generation. And so what should our response be? How should we engage? Well, I think the first thing we need to do is just be willing to say, this is happening. You yes. know, there's so many people, and this is particularly true, I hate to yeah. say this, but it's particularly true here in the South, mm. where people will say, oh no, we talk about Jesus yeah. everywhere. We have, have Chick-fil-A on every corner. No, no. You know, and so I have been saying now for- and Chick-fil-A. Come on. That, I, They're woke now though. I, I mean, I sadly, I it's know. very sad. Uh, yeah. Uh, but. I, I've been saying this for, you know, good 17 years. And then my message when I started 17 years ago, talking about this was kind of like, you know, if the Lord calls you to homeschool, not everyone's called to homeschooling. That was mine, uh, Heidi. Yep. Yeah. And that's absolutely mm-hmm. where I started. I mean, it was a journey for me. The Lord got a hold of my heart when I realized I am the primary educator for my children. That's right. And I had spent my lifetime. I mean, we've been brought up to think this way. And a lot mm-hmm. of your viewers are thinking, hey, um, you know, the schools teach our children, the pastor is in charge of their spiritual formation. All I do is birth them and feed them and get them to that's the right, right places, right? Well, it's like there was this path carved out before us right. and that's what you're supposed to do. Right. But that's not what the Bible tells us to do. That's exactly right. And we have been uh, miseducated as to our mm-hmm. role as Look parents. Right but here the Bible, we're yeah, the Bible is very, very clear. Uh, in Deuteronomy and all throughout scripture, Jesus said in Luke 640 that when a student is fully trained, he'll be like his teacher. Mm. And I think most of us, and this is certainly true for me, when my daughter was in the public school, we don't know who's teaching our children. No, we don't. We don't really know them. And we especially don't know that now. Yeah. And, and now it's, I mean, that was 25 years ago. Now it's a hundred percent worse or even more a thousand percent worse mm. than it was when my daughter was in the school system. But I think we, first we acknowledge, okay, our role as given to us by God and yes. his word is to be the primary education educator of our children. Now that doesn't mean we teach them every single subject, every single day. I'm a huge fan of tutors. We can talk about the homeschool right. resource center. Yes. Uh, but I do think what is happening in the schools, my position has really changed from, Hey, God doesn't call everyone to homeschool to the Titanic's on fire. The barn's on fire. At what point do you get the animals out? Yeah. At what point do you stop playing your violin on the bow of the Titanic and go, it's time to abandon yeah. ship. And I think it's time to abandon ship. The public schools are no place for Christian children. Uh, if you knew, and we learned this in the, in, in the Rona, right? My a pet name for um, the scandemic of yeah. you know that we've all lived through for the last three mm-hmm. years. Uh, if we knew that there was a virus with a 99.9% survival rate 
in our schools, what did we do? We pulled our kids out of school. Well, I'm here to tell you that there is a virus with a 99.9% .9 spiritual mortality rate in our schools. It takes no prisoners. Very few children are surviving the spiritual mm -hmm. attack that's happening against them. The public school system, the government schools, and that's really what they are, they are instruments of the state mm -hmm. and the state is not for God. There are only two kingdoms in this world. There's the kingdom of, of light and the kingdom of darkness. Right. Jesus said, you're either for me or you are against me. Are the government schools for him? Oh, no, then they are against no. him. And that is what that's the honest conversation that needs to be had. And so once you realize that you really have no choice but to pull them out. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, so Christian moms and Christian dads. So five days a week, you're sending your child off. Yep. Um, oh, I get this all the time. And I know you do, too. But I want and I think my child can be salt and light because I do take them to church on Sunday. Yeah. And I, I take them to church on Wednesday. They're a missionary. And, and, and we're, we're, we go to camps and they can save little Susie who maybe has two mommies or little Johnny who has two daddies. Mm -hmm. My goodness, I know what I say to that. Mm -hmm. Heidi, what do you say to that? Well, I say you can't, and this is what Ken Ham, my friend Ken's always saying, yeah. you can't give salt until you have it. That's right. Uh, our children, we would never in a million years mm -hmm. put a, a suit of armor on our seven-year-old child and give them a sack lunch and send them to the front lines of the war in Ukraine. Absolutely not. We would never do that. No. And yet every single day- They're not day, strong enough to stand. They are not strong enough to stand. And every single day, hundreds of thousands, right. if not millions of mm -hmm. parents are giving their kids a sack lunch and putting them on a little yellow school bus and sending them to the front lines of the culture war mm -hmm. where they're being assaulted, body, soul, mind, and spirit. We are sending our kids to the front lines of this war five days right. a week, nine months out of the year. Right. For 12 years in a row, we send them to Rome. In their most formidable years. It is, and, and the results are devastating. We are losing our children at uh -huh. record rates. And so- and Okay, so can we speak to that? Yeah. Because maybe sometimes people are, are I'm going to keep the focus. I always, I always said I'm going to be very transparent and I'm not going to shy away. I really want to keep the focus on the church, the American church mm -hmm. in this hour. Mm -hmm. And if you say you stand on the word of God, you love the Lord, the only way that we are going to reclaim, I feel the Holy Spirit right now, girl, mm -hmm. the only way we're going to reclaim our families, our nation, and where we can be a beacon of light where where we're allowed to walk into a Starbucks, which I don't go to Starbucks, mm -hmm. but we're allowed to walk in somewhere and do a Bible study. I believe the time is coming mm -hmm. where they're going to say, that's really offensive. I'm going to ask you to leave. Yeah. Or, or put that away because that's that, that's offending mm -hmm. someone in here. Well, it's absolutely coming. Look what's happening in New Zealand. I mean, where the social progressives have gotten absolutely control over the legislative bodies. Yes, yes. This is absolutely yes. happening. Absolutely. Well, th this is this is offensive and it's hateful. So the only thing standing between that is the church, mm -hmm. is the church. So I, I just want us to, you know, again, I want our voices to embolden the the, the church and, and Christian mommies and daddies, mm -hmm. and, and uh, give them some, you know, applicable. What what do I do? Mm -hmm. And and how do I stand against the culture right now, yeah. Heidi? And, and Heidi, are you telling me that the only way to do it is to take my kids out of government public school? Let's be bold. Yeah, it is the only way. Uh, leaving your kids in the government school system right now, people will say to me, I mean, I heard a really well-known uh, Christian teacher debating this. Maybe you saw that. Um, I did. I know. I was yeah. really disappointed by I it was. because, mm -hmm. you know, this is a woman who said, well, my kids are okay. You know what? I guarantee you her kids are not okay. Mm -mm. I guarantee you that there are remnants yeah. that are in their hearts that have taken root in their hearts yeah. that will be there for the rest of their lives. And it is our job as parents to give our kids as much um, ammunition as we prepare them to combat the lies that they're going to face in the culture. Children are not ready for the front lines of the no. culture war. And so what we want to do, and the salt and light argument, frankly, is foolishness. It, it is. Because it he is. wasn't even talking. It's weak. He, uh, yeah. I mean, he's not talking to little kids. Right. He's talking to people That's right. who know the Lord Jesus and who are supposed to be uh, uh, stop. They're, we're supposed to be chewing on the meat instead of mm -hmm. just drinking the milk. And it's a chastisement. Say, what right. is wrong with you? You guys are the light of the world. You're right. the salt of the earth that the salt loses its saltiness. What is it good for? Right. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a rebuke. Mm -hmm. It was never instructive to children. Well, and yet parents hide behind that. And again, to me, I hate to keep bringing this word up. It is cowardice. Yeah. It is uh, people say, well, I'm afraid. I don't think I have what it takes to homeschool. You probably don't. 
But God does. But God does. God does. And this was this was the argument Honey, I made too I before I took my kids out. I certainly did not feel like I, I, I felt so inadequate. And I thought, God, you're you're calling the wrong oh, person. That's where he wants you. I know. If you're listening to this so day good. and you feel inadequate, so guess what? You're right where God wants you. Mm -hmm. Because God is jealous for the glory. Yeah. That when, when uh, an ordinary mom and an ordinary dad say, I'm going to trust that God's going to give me. Uh, what it takes to take this child out of school and give them a great education. It's surrender. God wants the glory and he can't have the glory if we're all, you know, I wouldn't have been able to do that except for I found an awesome curriculum. It's got right. nothing to do with that. No, it it has everything to do with surrendering to the Lord. Yes. And if you're feeling inadequate, congratulations, you're right where God wants you that's, because that's he wants right. you to turn to him. He wants you to say, Father, I can't do this without your help. And all of a sudden you're in a posture to receive. Every day I would say that. Absolutely. <laughs> all of a sudden day. you're in the posture now. That's You've right. assumed the that's posture right. of a disciple, assume yeah. the posture of a servant, lead me, lead me, lead and me that's every what day he wants to do. I've every met a, a woman. This is such one of my favorite um, encounters ever. I met a woman with, I think, 10 kids or something. And uh, she came to the homeschool resource center one day. And of course, you know, my first question, a lot of homeschool moms are like me. Well, what curriculum did you use? Right. And she said, well, I use the Bible. And I was like, well, that's cute. <laughs> yeah, that's real cute. You use the Bible. Right. And, and she said, it. and, she, it. and yeah. she said, well, that was it. She said, until yeah. my kids were about in, uh, late into junior high, we just, we just used the Bible. They right. memorized large chunks of the Bible. That's how they knew what an apostrophe was and a comma was. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I, I'm just looking at her like, okay. I thought, well, that is the weirdest thing. Aren't you the classic home, the quintessential homeschooler who's probably right. growing your own wheat and you grinding into flour. <laughs> and I bet you sew jumpers for your kids of, you know, flax that you spun into wool from your house, whatever. And I said, what are your kids doing now? Oh, two of them are doctors. She's got three attorneys. A couple of them are teachers in the government schools that are actually bringing the light. And that's where we should be in the schools. We Christian teachers it. in the schools, Christian yes. teachers in administration, but no place for children. But my point is, if we didn't have access to curriculum, if we didn't have access to wonderful homeschool conferences, if we didn't have access to teachers like me who teach people how to homeschool, yes. and all we had access to was the word of God, Tony, it would be enough. It's enough. It would be enough. And it's that's enough. what I want people to hear. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Yes, and if he, he wouldn't do yes, that with our is. children, he won't do it anywhere. God will do it in your family. Yes, he God will. will do it with your children. He'll do it through your marriage. Homeschooling for us and homeschooling all seven of our children. Our number six just graduated. So I'm down to one. Wow. I'm wow. down to one at home now. Uh, the most amazing journey that God ever called us on was to take our children out of the public school and assume the responsibility Ditto. for educating them. Ditto. Best thing we ever did. And you know what? Some mommies, well, let me let me speak to myself. Going in, I would have said, that's a sacrifice. Yeah. And no, it ended yeah. up blessing me in yes. more ways. And, and, I, and I, I really mean that. It ended up blessing me so much because I got to really know my children through the the, the high mountain mm -hmm. tops and the, and the valleys. Yep. And, and I guess I was just uh, simplistic enough to take God at his word yeah. and, and lead, lead our family and trust him, trust him when I didn't know exactly what was uh, uh, ahead of me. But um, Heidi, you are such a huge voice and I can't thank you enough. And I get so many people, so many women, uh, you know, from all walks of life say, Tony, do you really think I can homeschool? And I, and, I, and, I, and I want to tell you yes. again, she just, I'm not only just echoing what she said, you can because God goes before you. Heidi, tell our viewers about um, the awesome facility, Firmly Planted, and just tell them what you got going on right now. Well, we've uh, we've opened up in 2017 a full-time homeschool resource center. We're offering over 180 classes there in the fall, everything wow, from the Constitution sister. to chemistry. Uh, the idea is that if a mom comes in off the street and says, I've had it with the public indoctrination system, I want to take my kid out of the school, we are there to remove every obstacle. So if you yes. say, I can't teach chemistry, we've got a chemistry tutor for you. Okay. There's a coffee store there. There's a bookstore there where they can wow. find curriculum. We'll help you write a, a transcript for your child. Uh, God's doing amazing things. People can find out more at firmlyplantedfamily.org. Firmlyplanted.org. That is so amazing. Guys, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to discuss more about Firmly Planted. Stay with us. Welcome to Seeds Family Worship. Our mission is to help kids and families get into God's Word. And here's how we do it. We sing God's Word. We believe that kids who sing God's Word know God's Word. And kids that know God's Word love God. We have over 178 word-for-word -word scripture songs across all streaming platforms, including Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon, and more. 
Hey, sweet friends, welcome back in the studio with me today is Heidi St. John. And Heidi, we are tackling the government public school system and in particular, what's going on in the school system. We were just talking about Firmly Planted, uh, this new resource, homeschool resource out in Washington, yeah. which I cannot wait to hear more about, but we'll talk about that later. But I think we need to just jump in and tackle what really is going on in the school system. And is there an alarm that we need to sound as Christian parents that the school system will never align with us biblically? And it, are we are we here? Are we in the hour to get our kids out? Yeah, we're absolutely here. I uh, I was on Ken Ham's television program just a couple of weeks ago, and I said, I declare a state of emergency. I saw that. This is sister. a state of emergency for the church. This okay. is a state of emergency for parents. We need to understand that our children are being deliberately targeted okay. by a leftist ideology that seeks to take them away from God's intended design and purpose for their lives. Right. That's the most important thing that parents need to know. Mm. And they're not hiding it anymore, right? Mm -hmm. We're in the middle of the holy month of pride, right? Right, which God says is one of the most, one of the deadly sins. Anytime you name and a movement everywhere. after everywhere. something that God says will bring death with it, something is terribly mm -hmm. wrong. And so this is in our schools. It's absolutely being pushed in the big box stores, the retailers. You saw what happened recently with Target. Uh, mm -hmm. And now we know right before the Listen, show, everybody, cold, you were showing Target. me a book that's being carried in your local Walmart that's yeah. teaching children how to summon demons. This is no joke. Mm -hmm. And the demonic world is real. And people need to understand that Satan is playing for keeps. And when Jesus Jesus said that uh, it is the responsibility of parents. He wasn't kidding when he said that your students, students will be a lot like their teacher. Yes. Uh, he's not joking around. The spiritual implications of this are staggering. Mm -hmm. And so the only the only real solution right now is for, for, for Christian parents to pull their kids out of the government schools, either put them in a Christian school or homeschool them. But what you need to understand is even if you put your child in a Christian school right now, you better understand the, the biblical framework of that Christian school because mm -hmm. not all Christian schools are created equal. I was just going to say, you need to vet that Christian school Absolutely. and make sure that Oh man, teaching... and this is true in the universities, for goodness sake. You know, people are sending their kids to these Christian universities mm -hmm. and many of them And sometimes I always think woke. that's worse. Yes. Because it's almost like your, your kids have put down their armor. That's exactly right. And they think that they're in a safe place yep. and they're not. And they're they're, not. they're teaching the wokeism of, of the age. Yeah, so and... you can look and see, I mean, a, a really great way to tell is, does that school have an office of diversity, equity, and inclusion? Does that, mm -hmm. does that school uh, talk about critical race theory? Are they teaching right. children that something's wrong with them because of their whiteness, what they call right. whiteness? We just uh, did an episode on yeah, that. Yeah, this it's spirit so of division, mm -hmm. which, you know, racism, obviously, and I'm not saying racism doesn't exist in the United mm -hmm. States because it does. But, but we're, at the root, it's sin. It is sin. And, and God condemns all of it. This is what mm -hmm. separates us from God. But getting back to talking about our children, we need to recognize that that responsibility rests with parents. And right. pastors, you are responsible for, for directing your church to understand the importance of biblical parenting. Mm -hmm. And biblical parenting doesn't stop when we drop our children off at school. And so the Homeschool Resource Center is not a drop off. We don't allow, we're not a school. Right. We don't allow parents to drop their kids off because what happens is- You're coming alongside of You're parents coming alongside them. That's them. your job. So we don't, whenever we drop our kids off, be it at a camp, be mm -hmm. it overnighters, we don't do sleepovers in my house anymore. <laughs> um, it's all of these things because we recognize our children are vulnerable. Yes. And the attacks that are coming right now in the culture are only aimed at children. Do you notice that? Mm -hmm. The drag queens stripping in front of children in our local parks and we're watching parents bringing their kids to things that are unsafe. Speakable. I know. Uh, even five years ago, we would have said that's pedophilia. Mm -hmm. We're normalizing. I hate to say this, but we're normalizing pedophilia we in this are. country. It's, that's happening and right now. And we've got right to now. speak plainly mm -hmm. about it. And so much of this is coming from the National Educators Association, one of the most evil, wicked unions to ever exist in the United States. Uh, and I think it's right up there with uh, with some of the worst unions that we've mm -hmm. read about, right? You talk, people talk about you know gangs and the mafia and all that stuff. I'm sorry, I think the National Educators Association is worse because it's targeting children. So let me say this, one, one of the things, I'm in the South, and I get this all the time, more more times than I care to admit. Um, so mommy says to me, Tony, but I know the teacher. She goes to my church. She's precious. She would never do anything. I, I trust her. Mm -hmm. And I say to her, but she still has to teach the curriculum that they are telling her to peddle. That's right. And and so can we talk about that? And and how do we, how do we communicate that to the moms? It's like. Uh, you, you, she, this teacher might be in your Sunday school class mm -hmm. and I'm sure she's precious, mm -hmm. but she still has a job to do. 
which is teach this curriculum that is anti the Bible. Mm -hmm. Now, um, it, now it's not even anti the Bible, but it's very antagonistic towards towards, parents, even towards parents. You're separating. The goal is to separate children from their parents. Yes. The goal is, and I've actually, I've to eliminate parental authority. Absolutely true. And they're telling your children, listen, you know, your parents are not bad people. They're good people. They just don't understand. Your parents are not educated. These backwoods hillbillies that raised you don't understand that there's 400 genders and you could be a narwhal whale this Friday if you want to be. <laughs> your parents are dumb and this is That's right. and they can't right. help it. It's not their fault. So don't hate your parents. Feel sorry for them. This is the message that's in the schools. And I also think it's really important to say we understand that there are good teachers in the schools. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Many of them are in my immediate family. I have family members that teach in the schools, mm-hmm. wonderful people whose hands have been literally tied by the government uh, restrictions that are frankly on them right now right. because of taxpayer dollars that go into these schools. And that's so they're right. accountable not to you, they're accountable to the government. Mm-hmm. And so that's what you need to know. This is not an attack against good teachers. Mm-mm. This is- No, me- far from it. Far from and it. And that's why I think yep. we need to address that. But we need to be able to say, if, you're, if your school is a member of the National Educator Association, and I guarantee you it is, this is in your child's school. Absolutely. And it doesn't matter how many good teachers you have, and it Absolutely. doesn't matter how many precious teachers and how many godly teachers and how many people are from your church that you grew up with that are in the schools. This material is in your in your child's school, and mm-hmm. they can't shield your child from it. Yeah. So if they say to me, well, I know my child's teacher. I say, great. Do you know all the kids that your, that your uh, child is in class with? Right. Do you know the people that your child is interacting with in PE? Right. Do you know the other teachers that are coming in and out of that classroom? Do you know the receptionist really well? Are these people that you've had at your house mm-hmm. for dinner? Because if they're not, you don't know them at all. Mm-hmm. And so and G- it's Jesus' our responsibility to know who's leading and pouring into our kids. Yeah. And I think we've gotten very used to in this country. Certainly, this is how I grew up. I'm a yeah. first generation homeschooler. Mm-hmm. That's just what Same. you did. Your, your kid turns five years old and you take him to school and all of a sudden you've got your day. Mm. Right. So and when I when I was a young mother, I just could not conceive of why a woman in her right mind would right. want to stay home all day long uh, with her right. kids for 12 years in a row when a yellow bus come take them away for free. And this has been the trap of the enemy. Mm-hmm. It's been to lull well, it's, us it's to a, sleep. It's a mindset. It's, it's just a mindset of the culture. It is. And it's and it's wrong. Right. And it's anti-biblical. It is. And so for us to be able to speak that now and be able to say it boldly yeah. uh, is absolutely imperative because of what's happening to our children right now. And once the enemy sinks his claws into these kids, it is very hard to get them back. Well, Heidi, you can't argue with how many many kids are leaving the church. Yeah. How many kids are not only leaving the church, but they're leaving truth and just objective truth. Yeah. I mean, just the insanity of where I forget, I don't have the headline with me and I don't know the college, but a young lady wrote a paper about a biological female. And because she used the word biological female, she got a zero on her paper. Yeah. Yeah. And so those are the indoctrination camps that are happening in our mm-hmm. colleges. Mm-hmm. And so and it starts in kindergarten. It and is. So what parents need to understand is this indoctrination is starting in kindergarten and what the government school systems in the uh, secondary education, you know, kindergarten through sixth grade and then into high school is absolutely finished. The nail goes in the coffin when they enter into the government college system. Mm. And we've got to be very aware of how important education is. Education is not neutral. No, it's and not. this has been the lie that we believe, right? We're mm-hmm. just like, oh, it's reading, writing, and arithmetic. I promise you, it's not that anymore. And when you talk about sex education in the schools, it's not the sex education that you and I grew up with. No. We learned how our no. bodies work. We learned how babies were made. Right. These kids are being taught that there's 400 genders. They're being taught all manner of wickedness, sexual perversion in the right. schools. I went to, I started going, my kids are not in the public schools, but I mm-hmm. started attending public school meetings about eight years ago before it was cool. Okay. And I was listening to the, uh, the curriculum review committees. And I went to one of the curriculum review boards. There are thousands of parents in this district. Do you know how many people showed up to review this curriculum? Probably not many. Maybe 20. Wow. And and my kids weren't even in the district. And I'm sitting there looking through the pages of this, of this so book. This is and it a was call. horrifying. Yeah. So this is a call for parents. Here's that word again. Engage. Get off the bench. Engage and get onto the battlefield. I love that you say that all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, the stakes are high. They're very high. The stakes high. are very high right now. Yeah. And even if you have someone or a teacher that you, you know, you're good friends with and, and you think that they're going to shield the, your, your child, I, you know, I just, I have to be bold and honest. It is time. It really is time is. for Christians. It's and I, past time, I'm, actually. It, it is. It's past time. And, and I think as, as biblical women, we have to be unapologetic 
that we have to save this generation when, mm-hmm. when, when we can't even have a discussion of what a biological woman is. Or oh, not yeah. too long ago, we had Riley Gaines mm-hmm. on the episode, and she was talking about you know everything she went through with uh, the transgender that she had to compete against, yeah. and and the culture is for Leah Thomas, yeah, not yeah. for Riley Gaines. We have a problem. Yeah. We have a problem. And so just equipping Christians to embrace that. You're not being hateful. Uh, you're not being unbiblical. Far from it. But it's time. It, it is, is time. time to reclaim and recapture this culture. Yes. And it's possible. And I think that's what I, I want parents to understand yeah. that and grandparents. Like we should care. Someone said to me the other day, well, I homeschool my kids. Why should I care about what's happening in the public school? Oh, I have a lot to say about that. Oh, my word. These are tomorrow's teachers, tomorrow's doctors, tomorrow's lawmakers. Yes. These are the people that are going to be making decisions for you and me when we're in a nursing that's home. That's right. And that's if right. they don't have a grip on reality, if they mm. don't think there's any such thing as uh, absolute truth, if to them truth is subjective and truth is all about your feelings, they're not going to think twice about pushing euthanasia. That's right. They're not going to think twice about pushing things. I mean, we're talking now about outright open murder in Canada Mm -hmm. and they know what it is. Mm -hmm. So we've disregarded life here in the United States in the womb, right? Which leads to disregarding life with outside of the womb, womb because maybe you have a child with a disability or we're, we're talking about uh, late term abortion. We're talking about infanticide, killing babies when they're just a few hours old, because they don't meet uh, the standards that we think are quote unquote, going to give them quality of life. Right. This is a lie from the pit of hell. Right. And we need to address the lies, call them out and do more than talk. Yes. Jesus said not to just love with words, but with actions. With actions. And you know, I want to say this too, and I know you've heard this all the time. And again, Ken Ham, I love this ministry answers in Genesis. Um, but he says, are you raising a child with a secular worldview that it's going to go along with the narrative of the, of the culture, or are you are you implanting, embedding into your child a biblical worldview where they stand for life, where yeah. they stand for truth? Um, what Riley's doing right now, I mean, mm-hmm. it's it's unpopular. I think she got punched in the face by a trans uh, person yeah. the last time she was speaking. Um, but right now is the time to reclaim our children pull them out of government public school and train them to stand on truth. And so Heidi, I can't think of anybody better than you. And I, and and I really mean that just because you and Jay, your husband, your entire family, you've thrown your life into this in in the sense that, um, God's called you. He's given you this assignment Mm -hmm. to sound the alarm for families. Mm -hmm. And so, um, what, what would you just to, to wrap this up? We don't have much time left, but to wrap this up, what would you like to say to our viewer viewers? on government education and reclaiming this generation. Well, I think part of the way part of the way we reclaim it is we look for opportunities to get along, come alongside people who are doing the work. Okay. Uh, that's why firmly planted family is so important. Yes. And so what we're looking to do is plant homeschool resource centers in every city across the United States. I have okay. a vision for this. Uh, we were talking about it before. I'm like, listen, yes. uh, I'm praying that in my lifetime, Target goes belly up like Kmart did. And we come in as homeschool resource centers and we put homeschool resource centers in every broken down, abandoned target building in this nation. And we start reclaiming this country for the gospel. And people can find out more about that at firmlyplantedfamily.org. I told you before the, the start of the show, I got a brand new book coming out. Yes. It's called Mom Strong 365, Everyday Truths for Everyday Mom. That releases from Tyndale in just a couple of weeks. So lots of good things going. Find out where God is at work yes. and get behind the people that God's calling to the front lines. God is working. God is working. Sweet friends, Heidi St. John is, she's such a blessing to me and so many uh, women out there. Thank you for joining us today and catch us next time on Standing Firm.